that one does 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 need a an amen clap. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. For those gathered here and those who are joining us online, welcome in Jesus' name on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. It's good to have you here. Let's see, treats this morning are from the Let's Bake group, so please stay for coffee. And for those of you who normally attend the adult class, Pastor Woody needs one more week of recuperation from his surgery, so uh, he let me know Friday that he didn't was, didn't think he was quite up to teaching this morning, but is uh, so you can stay for coffee and treats. And he is determined next week to be here for class. So class will resume for adults next Sunday. Also today, uh, Kai and Layton Beyer, two of our Boy Scouts, have popcorn. So if you want, like to get Boy Scout popcorn, they will have it in the in the narthex this morning. And then during the Sunday school hour. The shepherds are gathering for their fall gathering, so that's downstairs in the fellowship hall at 10.15, so uh, the shepherd gathering. And thank you to all the shepherds who provide care and prayer for all of us in the congregation. Also happening this week on Tuesday at 10, the grief group meets in the meeting room. And then of course Wednesday is the music groups and youth groups, and this week that includes the elementary kids, Grace, the Grace Kids group. Um, and the choir would like to welcome all singers who would like to sing for the Christmas cantata. So they're going to begin Christmas cantata rehearsals on Wednesday evenings from 7.20 to 8 o'clock. So the first part of the rehearsal will be for Sunday anthems and that. But if you would like to sing for the cantata, please show up here in the sanctuary at 7.20 on Wednesday. And then... Um, also coming up musically on the 23rd, we're having the polka service. So the liturgy is set to polka tunes and the hymns are polka tunes. And somebody asked, well, if I come, do I have to dance? Uh, no, dancing is optional. You could do a little pew polka, you know, maybe, or, but uh, no, it will be, uh, it's always a fun service. So um, that's on the 23rd. And then an update on the toilet paper challenge. Um, thank you so much for your generosity. We currently have purchased six pallets of toilet paper and we're working on the seventh. So that's quite a bit of toilet paper. We're figuring we are not gonna probably be able to beat our uh, last year's amount. That was 13 pallets. And the reason we say that is that, as you know, the cost of everything has gone up and a, a pallet has gone up $300 <laughs> in the last year. So you're being very generous and in last year's terms, we would have been able to buy like three more pallets, but um, just with the cost. And we are still getting a uh, negotiated price on it. So, but um, I know that the ministries that receive it, the necessities for neighbors and food to you are um, just very grateful for what we're able to do and it, uh, what we provide them, they don't have to buy. So, and they don't necessarily always get the price that we can get. So thank you very much. And we're continuing that through the 30th because we deliver the toilet paper then on that next Saturday. So if you're planning to participate, and you can also just bring toilet paper. We have some people who are just bringing the packages of toilet paper as well. So thank you very much. And then let's see, I'd like to call on Sharon Dirks who has a word about our, uh, Soup and pie supper that we had last Sunday. So, soup and sweets, soup and sweets, sorry. Well, on behalf of the Women of Grace Executive Board, I would like to thank all of you for everything you did to make our soup and sweets such a success after two years. And there were so many people that donated their time, your food. Um, generous free will offerings so we couldn't have done you know any more than what we did and so we're very thankful for that we were able to raise uh, two thousand six hundred and forty four dollars and forty cents that's our profit and we served around two hundred and eighty people uh, that money will go to our HVAC program our food to you our youth and the women of grace so thank you all again now pastor Siri I'd like you to Come forward a minute. Uh, as on behalf of the Women of Grace, uh, we would like to give you a gift card. And I was going to write something, and then I found a card that 
said everything I think we want to say. So it's called For a Special Pastor. You are a blessing to our congregation and to this community. Your insights from God's word encourage us and strengthen us. Your heart of compassion brings comfort and hope. You do make a difference. So thank you for reflecting the heart of our Savior in so many thoughtful ways. And now I'd like to call upon our Vice President, Chris Olson, for a few words. Pastor Sear, you might as well come back up here. <laughs> October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and today happens to be Pastor Appreciation Sunday. The word pastor is a Latin word that means shepherd. And isn't Pastor Siri a wonderful lead shepherd for our flock? Yes, yes. So Pastor Siri, we have a gift from the congregation here for you. On behalf of all the family members in the flock, we really love what you do and appreciate it. Thank you. I was going to say, Chris, you weren't on my list of announcements, but no. <laughs> no. Thank you, thank you. I, it is a joy for me to serve this congregation because it's just a great church and it's not a solo effort. I wanna thank the staff who does so much, um, they, they do so much, and all of you who, who volunteer. I mean, this is a ministry of the whole congregation and it's my, really, it is my honor and my privilege to be the pastor of this congregation because it's just, you do church very, very well, <laughs> I think. You do church well, and it is, it is, it's a joy and a privilege. So thank you so very much. Thank you. <laughs> and again, welcome, and, and we do gather to worship, and let us begin with our confession and forgiveness, and I invite you to stand. We bring our worship as we live our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we join in singing, Praise my soul, the King of Heaven.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. Together we join in the prayer of the day. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well, in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, it's time for the children's reading. The children are invited up to sit on the steps. And for those of you following along at home or in the pews, we are on page 42 today of the Spark Story Bible. question for you guys. Those of you that have brothers and sisters, do you guys ever fight? Yeah, see some nods? Yes, that surprises me. I thought you would always get along. In our story today, we have two brothers who don't always get along. So let's find out what it says today. It's called Isaac's Blessing. It says, Rebecca and Isaac asked God for a child. God gave them not one baby, but two twins. Kick, jab. 
Rebecca could feel the babies pushing and pulling on each other inside of her. God, she prayed, why are my babies fighting? They're in a race to be born first, God answers. Your family will be different. Your younger son will be the leader of the older one. This was a surprise to Rebecca. The oldest child was usually the leader of all the brothers and sisters. Wah! Esau was born first. He was hairy and red. Wah! Jacob was born next. He had smooth skin. The race was so close that Jacob was born holding on to Esau's foot. So they're both trying to come out first to be the firstborn. Before long, the twins grew into men. They were very different. Esau was big and strong. Esau made Isaac very proud because he was a hunter. Jacob was smaller than Esau and very quiet. Rebekah loved that Jacob stayed around home. When Isaac became old and blind, it was time to give his blessing to his oldest son, passing on the leadership of the family. Since Isaac couldn't see, he rubbed Esau's hairy arms to make sure he had the right son. Esau, he said, bring me dinner and I will bless you. Rebekah was listening. Jacob, she whispered, hurry, cover your arms with hairy goatskin to fool your father. Rebekah remembered that God said Jacob would make a better leader for the family than Esau. So Jacob dressed up like Esau and brought Isaac dinner. The plan worked. Jacob tricked Isaac into making him the new leader of the family. Now our star today says, how would you feel if you were tricked by your brother like Esau was? How would you feel if you were Isaac? Mad, maybe a little mad, yeah, upset, jealous, huh, angry, yeah. Do you think Esau is going to like this very much when he finds out? No. Sometimes we don't always get along with our brothers and sisters, do we? Um, so this is kind of a tricky story because Rebecca and Jacob tricked Isaac. And is it a good thing to trick people? No, it's not. But God said that Jacob would make a better leader, right? So this is kind of a tricky, kind of a hard story to understand. But even though um, they didn't get along in the story, we d you guys don't get along with your brothers and sisters too sometimes, right? Yeah, but some of us, we gotta try to get along with our brothers and sisters anyway, right? All right, thanks for coming up to you guys. Have a great week. The first reading comes from 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans were on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life, that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out, stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Pharpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more, when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. 
he came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 2. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, then we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this, and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth, the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Gratitude. Gratitude is a spiritual discipline. It means it's a practice that as when we, when we do it, it grows our faith, deepens our spirituality, connects us to God and to one another. Right? Gratitude is a spiritual discipline. I know I've been trying in the last year or so to say thank you, especially to those who may be invisible as they do their work. I know uh, I do this at drive through windows because often I grab a quick bite for lunch as I'm heading to a meeting or a visit, and so I'll go through a drive through to, to get something to eat. And it's real easy, especially after you talk to this disembodied voice, right? You just hear a voice, what would you like today? And you order and, you know, that um, to, to not really pay attention to the actual person um, who takes my money or hands me my food. And so I've been intentionally trying to look them in the eye and say thank you, even in the rush of a drive through and even as they're trying to get everybody through really fast, just to be intentional about that. And I don't know if it makes a difference for the drive through workers, but I know that saying thank you has really made me more aware of the gift of food that I am getting and how people provide that for me. Um, it changes me. So 
One of the things that comes from practicing gratitude, the spiritual discipline of gratitude, is this really just an awareness, an awareness of gifts given, of blessings received. And um, that awareness, that sense of a gift and blessing coming from outside myself really does make you realize that, that we really have nothing, but that we need one another, and especially we need God for everything we have. And when we say thank you, we are acknowledging that what we receive is a gift and a blessing. Someone has done something for us, you know, even if it's their job, they've done something for us and our, our giving thanks for that action makes us aware of the kindness received. And this awareness um, really keeps us from falling into an attitude of entitlement, which is really a turning inward, a placing ourselves at the center. And when that happens, we do not see what we have as a gift. And we can kind of make people into things, right? As we heard a couple weeks ago in that story of Lazarus and the rich man, Lazarus, or the rich man always saw Lazarus as kind of like a thing who was supposed to do what he wanted. Or we see that even with Naaman in our Old Testament story. He thinks, well, I'm this great warrior. I'm a leader. I have wealth. I have riches. I have the king's ear. Shouldn't this guy do something for me? He comes to see the prophet, and the prophet doesn't even come out to, to talk to him. He sends just a mere messenger out there and says, just go get into the Jordan seven times. And he's kind of like, what? Don't I deserve more? <laughs> Don't I deserve at least to meet this guy and have him, you know, wave his hands and do something dramatic for me? Right? Right? He's gotten turned inward. He's not practicing gratitude until somebody kind of, his servants sort of, you know, whoop him upside the face and say, think about it. <laughs> You're receiving a gift, <laughs> right? Just do what he says, right? But we can, we can fall into that to sort of like put ourselves in the center. But when we practice gratitude, it, it makes us look at those around us, those who are doing things for us. And um, that really we don't deserve or earn anything and it keeps us focused, really, on the giver. And especially as we practice gratitude, it focuses on the great giver, who is God himself. But also, when we practice the spiritual discipline of gratitude, it magnifies the joy of a gift or an experience. Right? David Loos, who uh, was a seminary professor, now he's back in a parish, the parish pastor, he talks about this. He says, think about it. He wrote this week something I read. He said, an event or a gift is made better when we thank another for their company, for what they have done or for sharing. Right? If you're sitting around enjoying time with your family, even if it's nothing formal, or, and you just all of a sudden realize you really appreciate having them there, and if you say, thank you, I am enjoying this time we're spending together, that does something. It magnifies that experience, right? It brings you closer together as you realize how important you are to one another. It really brings a greater gift. And in today's reading, we see that. This Samaritan leper receives not only a cure, but wellness, wholeness, right? As he comes back to say thank you to Jesus, right? He says, go on your way. Your faith has made you well or whole. Um, it's the word that's also connected to salvation in the Greek, right? There's something greater that happens for him. You know, Jesus didn't take away the cure from the other nine. They were cured. They received a healing. But this man um, discovered sort of a magnification of his healing. He had this whole, wholeness, this wellness that was even more. So that came with he, as he gave thanks and it connected him to Jesus in even a greater way than just being this healer. He realized he was the savior, right? The one who made him completely whole, not just cured. Your faith has made you well. And what this leper received was a pure gift. Now it was a gift because before this with leprosy, he was isolated, he was ill, living under a death sentence, but somehow, he knew who Jesus was and that Jesus could cure him. And Jesus 
Jesus comes to do just that. We see Jesus here as the giver of wholeness, the giver of life. Jesus came into this borderland, right? He crossed a border um, to, as he's traveling. And Jesus crossed a boundary to draw near to this place where the lepers lived. And, and Jesus crosses lines to give us what we need. You know, um, there's, Jesus gives a great gift. <laughs> And when we think about it and give thanks for it, that gift becomes magnified. You know, he crossed the border between life and death. He went to the place of death, but then he crossed the border from death to resurrection, from death to resurrection, and brought life. And he crossed that border because of grace, right? Grace, which is a gift given, not earned. And he crossed the border for this outsider who was not welcome, and seen as the other, and he also crosses the borders for us that we might have life. And this leper received the gift, the cure from leprosy. And as he turned back to Jesus to say thanks, he received so much more, wholeness and salvation, life itself. So gratitude magnified the gift and the experience, and he does that also for us. He has given us the gift of life now and always. And when we say thank you, that life just becomes stronger in us and is magnified. Now, the spiritual discipline of gratitude also helps us to see what we have and not what we lack. Um, even in hard times, we have blessings. We have something. And we live out of sense of of being provided for. We live out of a sense of a generosity rather than of a need or a lack. You know, and it's because God is faithful, right? God is faithful, as the second lesson talked about. God is faithful in giving us what we need. God is faithful in being with us always. God is faithful. And so, with gratitude in our hearts, we give thanks to God. We can look each day for the blessing given. And we can see all the people who care for us and touch us in some ways, because there is a gift and a blessing in each day that we live. God is faithfully working to provide what we need. And so it's there. To practice this discipline, spiritual discipline of gratitude means that we look, right? We look for the ways that we are touched by other people. Now, this Samaritan Express gratitude. So I would encourage you, actually challenge you, maybe to be that one, that one out of the, out of the ten who expresses gratitude. Be that one who says thank you. So as you encounter people this week, people who serve you, people who touch your life in a, in a good way, be that one. As you receive blessings, be that one. Be about giving thanks and see what happens. Because the one who is the giver of life will bless you and you will draw nearer to him as you practice the spiritual discipline of gratitude. Be that one. Amen. Let's stand as we sing.
We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops and pastors and deacons and lay leaders Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Empower all your people to be witnesses of grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down the boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. And continue, O oh God, to sustain all those who have been affected by disasters. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized. Bring your peace on earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send your healing to all who suffer, especially those we name in our hearts and those on our prayer list, including Dorothy, Woody, and Jerry. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick, especially our shepherds and home communion servers. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioner of medical arts. Bless our nurse, Rita Blake. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to greet those around you with Christ's peace and turn to the camera and greet those who are worshiping in other spaces. And then you may be seated. I do want to thank you for all your tithes and offerings. Through them we are doing Christ's work through our hands. If you brought an offering with you today, you can leave it in the offering plate that's on the table just outside the center doors. And as we sing our offering song, if there are kids who have noisy offering, I think the can is there. Yes, I remembered. <laughs> Couldn't think. Uh, as we sing, they can bring it up to the can, their noisy offering, if they have it. So let us sing our offering song.
Together we pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth fruit from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we join in the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready and all are invited to the table of the Lord. The so servers are ready and the ushers will direct you forward to receive.
Would you stand? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Together we pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.